Honorable members of the panel, distinguished guests, fellow students and friends, ladies and gentlemen. When I began to think of what I should say to you this morning, I wished only to express very simply my appreciation to my classmates for designating me to speak for them. To profess my own unworthiness would be to cast doubt upon their wisdom. To praise them might suggest that I approve of their decision. May I therefore ask that it be taken for granted that I experienced on being chosen all the normal emotions of exaltation and vanity that all any human being might be expected to feel in these circumstances. <laughs> as far as this esplanade is concerned, I think it was empty a couple of hours ago, and it will be empty a couple of hours hence. Our presence in it is quite incidental. On the whole, from the point of view of anyone's spread, from, from, on the whole, from, from Space's point of view, everyone's presence is, is, is incidental in it, unless one possesses a permanent, a possesses a sense of permanence as usually inanimate characteristic of landscape. And it is the appearance of something or somebody unusual within a space well used to its contents that creates a sense of occasion. Please join me in saluting the vision which made our presence here today a positive event, since it is the mission of your peace that a humanistic conversion, even of the most terrible knowledge, can improve the quality of life for mankind. And we join in the endeavor that the lyric face of that demiurge would triumph in our time, snaring for all time that elusive bird peace on our planet Earth. The world has known an accumulation of abominations, some of which have led must have led Aristotle to the doctrine of catharsis, purification through horror. The difference between an easily acquired pessimism that rests content with untroubled skepticism and a pessimism that is dearly bought and which penetrates to mankind's utter destitution, the former commences and concludes with the concept that nothing is really of any value. The latter is based on exactly the opposite outlook. For what is worthless cannot be degraded. The perception of human degradation, which we have witnessed, perhaps, to a greater extent than any previous generation, is not possible if human values are denied. Although we are faced with the tragedy of universal fear, a humanity which does not doubt that life has a direction and a goal cannot be a humanity in despair. Rarely in history have brutal facts so dominated thought or have such widespread individual virtues found so dim a collective focus. I am not sure that man will prevail. But what I'm sure about is that the man who carries the vision of peace and stays close to his fold is more likely to prevail than the man who doesn't. Our education here in your peace, I believe, should make us di distinct for the magnanimity of our spirit, for the independence of our judgment, and for our love for peace. But the experience becomes all the more painful as the recognition of human dignity deepens. This is the source of inner cleansing, the life force nevertheless in our pessimism. It houses a love of mankind that grows in understanding and as it plums further into the depths of abhorrence, a despair that has to reach the utmost bounds of suffering to discover that compassion has no bounds. From that position, in the realms of annihilation, I believe, emerges the supreme significance of your peace. We as students, especially of the Department of International Law and Human Rights, past, present, and future, have the responsibility to maintain your peace as a supreme mark of distinction in the field of effort directed toward the attainment of man's highest aspiration, the establishment of enduring peace based on justice and fair dealing, dealing for all. The crucial test, therefore, for men and women of all nations today is whether or not they have suffered enough and have learned enough to put aside suspicion, prejudice, shut run and narrowly conceived interests and to unite in furtherance of their greatest common interest. That overwhelming and overshadowing common interest is enduring peace, within the framework of which man's newly found powers of science and technology can be used to raise to undreamed of heights the well-being of humanity. The promise, therefore, of your peace 
will be the cornerstones of a new edifice, of enduring peace and the guideposts of a new era of human progress. And we students, in particular the students of international law and human rights whom I salute at this very moment, today and alumni tomorrow, shall be the moving forces of this system. We shall raise the University for Peace to its pedestal in the thoughts and emotions of forward-looking humanity. I thank you all.